Salutations, viewers across the world. This is the Maths and Science Guru, Chico Squared, in collaboration with Farmer Media Educational TV. Welcome to this episode on circle geometry. Okay, right. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining the circle theorems. I'm going to be just giving you a brief outline of uh, the circle theorems and what is expected of us in as far as the circle theorems are concerned. I'm not going to be focusing on uh, the questions. I'm going to do another video uh, where we are looking at uh, specific questions on circle theorems. Okay. Right, let's hit the ground running. So I'm going to start with the simple basics. Okay. I'm sure everyone knows what a circle is. This is a circle, right? And this is a center of the circle. Normally, the center of a circle is denoted as O. Okay. So, remember, diagrams are not drawn to scale. So, if your eyes are seeing something which appears to be a center, and if it's not mentioned that it's a center, or if there's no O that is written there, please note it's not the center of that circle. Okay? So, the line which passes from the center to any point on the circumference is known as the radius. Okay? And then the line which bisects the circle into two equal parts is known as the diameter. So this is the radius, this is the diameter, and you need to know that the diameter is equal to two multiplied by the radius, okay? Right. Then the next thing you need to understand is what is called a chord, okay? If I draw any line, A, B, this is known as a chord, a line which passes through uh, circumference to circumference of a circle is known as a chord. This is also a chord. A diameter is a special type of a chord which bisects the circle into two equal uh, superimposable mirror images. It's also a, a line of symmetry for a circle. Right, so I have a chord AB, and in the chord AB, there are what are known as segments. So a chord will divide circle into two segments. So this is small segment here is known as the minor segment, and this one is known as the major segment. Okay. Right. So we have the minor segment, we have the major segment. And also, what we can see from this chord is that this chord is going to create arcs. Okay. So if you check here, this is an arc. It's known as a minor arc. And this is an arc, which is also known as the major arc. So these are some of the basics of circles. So let us move on now to what are known as circle theorems, okay? But before we look at circle theorems specifically, I'm going to be talking about what is known as angle subtension, okay? So... Before you can understand circle theorems, you need to understand what is known as angle subtension. So let me draw a circle here. All right. And we have angle theta. And let's say we have a chord A, B. Right, if you check on the diagram here, I have an angle theta which is being subtended by arc AB or chord AB. Why do I say so? If you want to check if an arc is subtending an angle or if a chord is subtending an angle, I advise that you come here, you know, where up up, pan angle theta. And then what Zika nema line asho kudai so and it and rugona chichirigiti kapa root zika nema lines kudai so uchabata pano tangira A ne pano perra B. So whenever you are confronted with this uh, situation here, it means that angle theta is being subtended by the arc AB or by the chord AB. I hope uh, it is understood. Okay. And also another example for angle subtension is this situation over here. 
I have this angle, that reflex angle I have uh, labeled there, right? If you check, let me call this arc AB again. This arc AB, the bigger arc, is actually subtending this reflex angle, okay? Because you are going to see that you are going to see that you are going to see that B and it tilt is a Again, this arc AB is also subtending. Let me call this angle A. Angle A is also being subtended by this big arc AB. All right. So it is my hope and it is my expectation that everyone has understood what angle subtension is all about. So let's move on to the second theorems now, right? I'll start with the first theorem that I'm going to be discussing is this one. This is the center of a circle O and I have, let's say, angle X here and this is angle 2X. Right, ladies and gentlemen, what can you see from the diagram? What you can see from the diagram is that the angle X at the circumference and the angle 2X at the center are being subtended by the same arc CD, okay? So the law goes like this, the theorem goes like this. The angle subtended by an arc at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So the angle that is subtended at the center of a circle is twice the angle that is being subtended at the circumference. Let's move on to the next theorem. Right, this is what we have. Just draw a diagram there. Let me call this angle A, angle B, and angle C. Right, what do you notice per angle A, B, and C? What you can notice per angle A, B, and C is that all these angles are being subtended by the same arc. Let me call this arc EF. Arc EF is subtending A, B, and C at the circumference. So these angles are in the same segment and they are being subtended by the same arc EF. So the law reads like this. Angles in the same segment are equal. Or we can say angles subtended by the same arc at the circumference are equal. I hope it is understood. Let's move on to the next theorem. Right, here's the next theorem. Right, we have a diameter and then we have something like this here. What do you notice, ladies and gentlemen? This is a semicircle. This is a diameter, okay? The angle subtended by a diameter is 90 degrees. The angle subtended by a semicircle is 90 degrees. So a semicircle subtends an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. Let's move on to the next theorem. Right, we are now looking at what are called cyclic quadrilaterals, okay? Cyclic quadrilaterals. I'll start by defining what a quadrilateral is. A quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. And let me define what a cyclic quadrilateral is. A cyclic quadrilateral is a four-sided shape in which all the four vertices are touching the circumference of the circle. If one of the vertices is not touching the circumference of, a, of that circle, it means that it's not a cyclic quadrilateral. Right? For instance, if I have something like this here, this is a quadrilateral, but only three vertices are touching the circumference, and one of the vertices is not touching the circumference. So this is not a cyclic quadrilateral, so all the theorems that we are going to be talking about regarding cyclic quadrilaterals 
are not applicable to this diagram because it's not a cyclic quadrilateral on the basis that one of the vertices is not touching the circumference of the circle. So this is the cyclic quad. So in cyclic quadrilaterals, we have two theorems, okay? Let me label the angles A, B, C, and D. So the first theorem, Yema cyclic quadrilaterals, the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary, okay? The opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. By supplementary, what we mean is they add up to 180 degrees. So if you take A and C, they add up to 180. B and D, they add up to 180. So A plus C is 180. B plus D is 180. Why? Because these are opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, and they are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. Okay. Then the next theorem, Yema cyclic quad, goes like this. I have a cyclic quadrilateral, and I have created what is known as an exterior angle. All right? The word exterior means outside, interior means inside. So, this is a cyclic, this is a, a, an exterior angle that I have generated from this cyclic quadrilateral. So that theorem reads like this. The exterior angle in a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. So the angle that is interior and opposite to A is this one, okay? The exterior angle in a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. If I generate another exterior angle, let me call it B here, all right? it's going to be equal to this one. Remember, the exterior angle in a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. Okay. I think I'm done with regards to cyclic quadrilaterals. Let me move to another theorem. All right? Other theorems, rather. All right? So, this is what we have here. Right, for the other theorems. Right. I'm now talking about theorems regarding tangents, okay? I'm sure you are aware of what are called tangents. A tangent is a line which only passes through one point on the circle. Line Rinongo Gunza, one point chete. This line is coming from where it's coming, but when it comes to the circle, it only has contact with the circle at only one point. This line is known as a tangent. So, my theorem is a tangent, Agamira So. All right? We have, this is a sender, this is a radius. Okay? So, the angle that is between a tangent and a radius is 90 degrees. So, tangent and radius will give us an angle of 90 degrees. Unufana Garochi you must always know this. You must always register this in your cerebral hemisphere. Right. Let me look at another theorem, Yema tangents. The other theorem, Yema tangents, you know what? Let me draw the diagram. Right? This is a chord and this is a tangent. Okay? As you can see, this chord here and this tangent are forming, let me call this angle A. So angle A is being formed by this chord and that tangent. So the theorem reads, the angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle that is subtended by the chord at the circumference. If you check this chord here, it's the one that is subtending A at the circumference. And it is the same chord that is producing angle A with this tangent. All right? What if I say... Uh, all right, so... 
The angle between a tangent and a chord is equal to the angle subtended by the chord at the circumference. Let me look at the last but not least theorem, circle theorem. This is regarding tangents from an external point on a circle. As you can see from this diagram, ladies and gentlemen, these are two tangents which are coming from an external point, a point which is outside the circle. So the theorem, the angle between, sorry, tangents from an external point are equal, right? My tangents are over a point in a circle. So if tangents from an external point are equal, it means that these tangents are actually forming what is known as an isosceles triangle. And what do we know about an isosceles triangle? There are two sides which are equal, and also the base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. Ladies and gentlemen, viewers across the world, I hope you have been enlightened uh, with these circle theorems. This is part one for circle geometry, and for part two, we are going to be looking at how to apply the circle theorems in answering questions, in answering examination type questions. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, this is your host, Chico Squared, and the crew behind the scenes at Former Media Productions. Be blessed and stay blessed. I salute you.